Welcome back once again to the CPL Newsroom presented by Volkswagen. You probably know the drill by now. I'm Charlie O'Connor-Clark. That's Mitchell Tierney over there. We are doing our team-by-team 2024 Canadian Premier League season previews. Uh, Where are we now, Mitch? The fourth one? We're on on number four? Uh, That's Pacific FC, obviously. Pacific, who hosted a midweek playoff game last year. One over York, one in Halifax in their first their next playoff game, and then we're uh, eliminated at the the semifinal stage, I guess we'd call it, by Cavalry FC. Again, we have five questions prepared to talk about Pacific. We are going to put ten minutes on the clock. Did it work? It did. And we are going to start. So, Mitch, to begin with, there's been some big, big names that have left this team in this off season. Manny Aparicio and Amir Didich are probably the biggest, I think, that we would be able to mention. Uh, how big are those particular losses and which of them is bigger? Well, I think both are obviously, you know, pretty significant losses. These were cornerstone pieces of the Pacific FC side over the past two years. But, you know, if you want to talk about which one's bigger, I think it has to be Manny Aparicio. You look at the back-to-back nominations for CPL Player of the Year. Um, He was a member of that 2021 championship side as well. Now there's only two remaining players from the starting lineup, uh, that being Josh Hurd and Thomas Mayer-Jaguer, who are still with Pacific, you know, a few years later. And um, Pacific won just two of 17 matches over the past two years, in which Aparicio didn't play at least 45 minutes. So... Um, I think that in itself kind of answers the the question. Uh, just a player who's been the engine of that team for for three seasons now, and I think played some of his best career football with Pacific. Two of seventeen. That's not games. great. <laughs> that Manny didn't play forty five minutes. That is rough. I know we've talked before about, or in both of the last two seasons, about how important he was to that team, but I think that kind of puts it into into pretty stark perspective for these guys, and it is going to be a very very different. Pacific FC team this year with a lot of moving parts, a lot of new pieces. But before we get to some of the uh, changes in the in the in the outfield, in the attack, and in the midfield, let's start in goal. Uh, obviously, this year's goalkeeping tandem, Emil Gazdov, returning. He played maybe what just over half of the of the minutes as the starting keeper last year, competing a bit with Kieran Basket. They brought in Sean Melvin to challenge him. How does that kind of experienced uh, addition to to this group maybe? push Gazdov and, and is this goalkeeping tandem better for it? I think this is a bit of a theme for for the club as a whole as they wanted to bring in a little bit more experience this season. Um, they have, you know, a lot of young, talented players that they are really high on and, and excited about. And, you know, Emil Gazdov is, is one of those players, but they felt maybe there weren't enough of those veterans around them. Certainly over the second half of the season, maybe um, you saw that to, you know, provide that leadership and character when things get tough. And yeah, I think this is going to be great for Gazdoff and it's going to be great for Pacific because it will push him. It will provide him a a mentor and a goalkeeper and Sean, you know, Melvin, who has plenty of experience, not just in the CPL, but, you know, around North America can, can lean on that to, to help out Gazdoff. And, you know, really this is a battle for, for the number one spot. Melvin comes in with tremendous talent and he'll want to play as well. So, you know, talking to James Merriman, he's already talked about the professionalism and the attitude that, that Melvin's brought to this group. So I think it's a big ad for, for them this off season. And yeah, it's going to be a fascinating goal keeping battle to watch all year. Yeah, I think so too. I mean, Gazdov still only 20 years old, but he's a, a player that this club has put a lot of faith in over the years. He's been there quite a while now, obviously went on loan to Germany for a little bit, but I think he's been at Pacific since he was 17. And last year, they started to give him the the keys to the number one job. Maybe it, it he struggled at times, but again, they kind of trusted him and they did what they could to keep the confidence up by continuing to to give him those opportunities to, you know, sometimes you need to give a young player a chance to fail and then you you help them by by building them back up. Melvin obviously being a Vancouver Island native. So another, another homecoming in a sense uh, at, at Pacific. That's going to be an interesting story to watch. I think I'd probably still expect Gazdov to start the season in goal, but you know if he if he does struggle a little bit, maybe Melvin takes a couple of games. Um, he's also a player who's been a backup for a few years in Atletico Ottawa, so he's probably expecting to get at least a little bit more playing time on the island as well. So that'll be an interesting one to see develop. Question number three at the other end of the pitch: Can Pacific FC finally find a consistent goal threat? 
you know, they, they didn't get the goals they wanted last year out of Easton Ungaro. He only scored five. Adonijah Reed scored at some pretty timely occasions, including in the playoffs, but maybe not as much as they wanted. Iman uh, Salouf, the leading scorer on the team, with seven, though, and a lot of his contributions came off the bench. Mitch, do they have what they have in this group to have that kind of consistent goal scoring threat and be, you know, a little bit more dangerous going forward? Yeah, well, I think the name that they're still really chasing is a replacement for Alejandro Diaz. And, you know, what is it, a year, a season and a half later, and they're still looking for that replacement. They didn't get it in Gennaro Daniels or Easton Ongaro or, you know, Adonijah Reed, as, as you mentioned. Um, Reed's still there, obviously, and, and still will be a, a threat. You know, Iman Salouf has proven he can create goals in this league. They've got Josh Hurd. Um, I think having a number 10 in Andre to Silvino will will help them as well. Uh, maybe a little bit more uh, help. <laughs> I'm getting a, I'm getting a, a look for my pronunciation there. Let's <laughs> fair enough. We'll have to um, ask him. Yeah, we'll have to ask him. But uh, I think Rion Moore is is an intriguing signing. I think uh, Dario Zanata as well. Someone who comes in with a lot of pro experience from Scotland, um, which is you know sometimes a, a tricky league to extrapolate from um, in terms of you know where you know how they do when they go to other leagues but i think more is the big one coming from the trinidad and tobago national team player who has proven himself at the Concacaf level and who they'll, they'll really rely on um they created all the chances they needed to score goals last season i mean they led the league in expected goals so you know i think more will have his opportunities this year but again neither of these players are have cpl experience so it's really hard to say and, and they're they're coming from levels that you know are hard to know how they'll translate to the canadian premier league in terms of you know the the trinidad and tobago league and um you know scotland uh league one i believe was where zanata was playing um when he came in towards the end so yeah it, it'll be really intriguing i think they have some good players there but we'll see if you know they can be those those goal scorers yeah, Pacific were a bit frustrating to watch an attack at times last year, and I think James Merriman was the most frustrated by it <laughs> at times because they they obviously had the quality and they had a lot of directness at times with players like Josh Hurd and, and Kunle Dada Luke just kind of bombing it into that attacking third and getting to those areas. But then when they got there, it seemed like the, the pace came off and and maybe the, the movement wasn't there to try and unlock those spaces and those running lanes for, for dangerous passes. So it felt like maybe that creativity was missing and it just there was something not quite clicking and, and it felt a little stale towards the end of the season. So I think one of the big things this team will be looking for will just be that dynamism in the attacking third. Somebody to, you know, create that space to make those runs and to again bring a bit of a different dynamic that his club didn't have last season. Moving on to question four. This is one that we are obviously asking of every Canadian Premier League team on this show. Which of Pacific's new signings will have the biggest impact? Mitchell, I feel like we may have mentioned one of them, but let me know, uh, you know if you've got a different name. Yeah, I think for, for better or for worse, you know, a lot of pressure this year is going to be on Rayon Moore. Um, you know, this season is hopefully the team's answer to the number nine position. And, you know, just because that's been the missing piece of the puzzle for, for so long for this team. You know, we've seen it internationally. This guy can score big goals. Um, mm -hmm. He'll get... Plenty of service, I think, between Salouf and Hurd and, you know, all of those guys that we mentioned that can create opportunities. Um, I think this is a real chance for him to, to prove himself. Yeah, uh, I think that there are maybe some some names on Pacific's incoming transfer list that are going a little under the radar because uh, maybe they're unknown. You mentioned Andre. I'm going to I, I want to say Tirkovanu. I don't speak Romanian either, so <laughs> we'll ask him. But he's a he's a, a pretty highly touted young kind of number 10 player. And they, they haven't really played with that kind of fully forward attacking midfielder in a while. So that'll be interesting to see if it's a little bit of a different style from Pacific. I'm also interested in Ali Ndom, who I think is somebody that, that people aren't necessarily talking about very much. He's got quite a lot of experience in France. He's played in Ligue 1. He's played you know, in, in the French Cup and at a very high level of football. And I think that he might be, you know, the player that Pacific are looking at to, to maybe fill a little bit of Didich's shoes uh, and, and take on some of those those defensive duties. Uh, so that's, again, a player that I will be watching pretty closely. I don't think he's certainly not the same kind of player, and I don't think he's quite as tall as Didich. But I think that, <laughs> that Dom definitely might be. No, very few people are. Um but I think that he might be somebody that becomes a very, very important part of this team. Final question. We have 50 seconds left on the clock, Mitch. What does success look like for Pacific FC in 2024? 
obviously fourth place in 2023. Uh, what I think third the year before. Uh, let me know what you think success is in 2024 for this club. Yeah, it's tough that we're so limited because this might be the most tricky team because you know they did lose so more or so much in terms of uh, quality talent, but. You know, I think either a top three finish or an appearance in the final is probably success. That means progression. I know internally they'll want or love to get back to CONCACAF, but um, I think, you know, after back-to-back semifinal appearances, that's kind of the next step for this team is to either reach a final or get back into that top three uh, in the standings. Absolutely. And I think this is a club that will just want to be more consistent with its performances. They'll want to score first more often in games, which they didn't do very much last year. They felt like... (laughs) As the piano riff starts to play. Nice. Awesome. I like that one. Um, <laughs> but yeah, this this is a club that felt like they needed a wake-up call in games a lot of times last year to actually play their best football. I think Amir did it, said it a bunch of times, so I think they'll want to come out a little bit more dangerously at the start of games and end up more comfortably in the playoffs and, and higher up in the top four to end the season. Again, Mitchell Tierney, thank you very much for breaking down Pacific FC with me. Uh, as you guys all know by now, stick with us every day and we will continue to run through the eight Canadian Premier League teams, uh, obviously tomorrow being fifth place and that being York United FC. Um, if you're watching on YouTube or on uh, on campl.ca or I believe on Twitter, thank you very, very much for joining us and we will see you tomorrow.